My name is Alyssa Dominioni. I am MBA 2018, and I have the pleasure of hosting this session tonight with Clémence Pontuel, as well as key alumni leaders, NHEC on the American continent. This is our third Booster H Network in regional webinar series, and there has been tremendous interest. So we thank you all for your presence. Please note that this session is recorded. HEC alumni was ranked number one in the world. A great recognition to the strength and the potential of our community. And you should see my slides now. We all chose HEC Paris as a school that would career and creating connections with people in the best way to start. So the HEC alumni network with these webinars on specific regions to give you an introduction to some of the key main stakeholders around HEC that are there will be more on the Middle East, Africa, South Asia. The hope is to go around every year. So before we get into our presentation, we want to know more about you. Notice that your mics are off and we ask you to keep them off, but we invite you to use the chat. So first, can you please write your name, your graduating class, and your country of residence in the chat box to give us an idea of who's with So your name, class, and country of residence. Great, thanks everyone. So today, after a brief introduction of the HEC alumni services, our objective is to introduce you, thanks to our speakers, to some key countries in What is this not? Unfortunately, we don't promise a job at the end of this session. We won't cover all countries from the continent, nor can we answer very specific individual questions. However, this overview will hopefully give you a better understanding of the markets, whether it is for a job or for business, and hopefully you will know who to contact in a specific country to get to take the conversation further after this session. Now, can you please 20 seconds to use the chat box again and tell us what you're hoping to get from tonight. So what are you hoping to get from the session? Use the chat box. This will help us shape sessions like these. And we will also be sending you a feedback form at the end of the session. So use the chat box to tell us what you're hoping to get from this session. Now, before we go into country specifically, a quick reminder of some of the HEC alumni services available to you. You can find events and contacts on the HEC website. HEC alumni hosts many events, which don't only happen in Paris. We had close to 600 events and webinars um, last year. And through the directory, you can search people per class or name among the 68,000 HEC alumni around the world or in specific sectors, via the professional clubs or the international chapters on the networks page. Remember to log in to get full access to contacts. And remember to update your contact information, please. HEC Life Project is the new name for our career services. And it's here that HEC alumni wants to be there at every step of your life project, with three main focuses, building your project, being inspired to innovate, and fulfilling your full potential. So you will find a range of events and online workshops. You also have access to job boards, the HEC Pulse mentoring platform, and the newly launched coaching access offer to meet with professional coaches. Finally, a reminder that we are able to do this thanks to those who support us, the membership, whether the Infinity Pass or annual membership. So if you haven't subscribed yet and can, 
please consider it or contact the HEC alumni team to discuss. Make sure you also check the new HEC Stories magazine, as well as videos and podcasts, including in English. And there's more information on the website, hecstories.fr. Now, let's get into the Americas part of our presentation. On HEC alumni, there are over 4,500 alumni who are members of the international chapters, which are alumni groups in specific countries. And today we have alumni chapter leaders and international office directors for, from many countries. We will also share names of contacts in other countries at the end, and we will do our best for your questions. So now let's start with our first chapter and we're gonna meet with Canada in Quebec. Yes, hello everyone. So I'm Anne Valérie from Quebec. In case you can see through my window, uh, just in back of, at the back, there's snow. We're actually in the middle of a snowstorm here. So I am the uh, co-president of the Quebec chapter together with Emmanuel, who is also on the call. We are both HSC class of 94. So it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, so just to introduce you a bit to Quebec. Um, so Emmanuel and I are the two co-presidents and we also have a team of nine uh, active members that are helping us every day. In terms of uh, how does our network look like here in Quebec, we have about 700 alumni, nine animators, as I, as I just mentioned, and we hold approximately two events per month. What is important is that we are a new team appointed in January and very dynamic. So that's also one of our characteristics. Um, in terms of goals, uh, for us, really what's important is to identify our network, and we're still struggling to uh, fully identify it uh, as we have a lot of uh, uh, people that are interested in the network but not necessarily here in Canada. Um, we want to animate the network, uh, develop, a, develop mutual aid, especially for the newcomers here in Canada and Quebec specifically, and we want to of course promote the HSC brand. So uh, wh what about Quebec? So uh, in Quebec, there's about 8 million inhabitants. So Quebec is a province of uh, Canada. Uh, in Montreal, only about 3.5 million. Um, and what you probably know is that um, there are many world-class universities in Canada and also uh, very much in Quebec and only in Montreal, four top universities. In terms of the uh, big, I would say, industrial uh, areas, um, well, Canada and more specifically Quebec is well known for agriculture, aerospace, pharmaceuticals, hydroelectricity, and everything that, that's linked to software, gaming, and the creative industry overall. It is a French speaking market um, and it is also what we call a welcome platform for the American continent because a lot of um, uh, foreigners interested in coming to live in North America actually uh, come first to Quebec, uh, Canada as it is easier from an administrative standpoint, usually. Um, in terms of local tips, speaking French obviously helps. Um, and the style here is informal yet not familiar and also Quebecers uh, like to look for compromise. There are other networks that can help you uh, beyond the uh, HSC alumni network and we've list listed sorry a few here like the Chambre de Commerce Française uh, and others and um, if you want to uh, contact Emmanuel or myself uh, you can easily do so via our emails or via our LinkedIn page uh, or WhatsApp group. Thank you very much and looking forward to welcoming you. Thank you, Anne-Valérie, that was great. And thank you both, um, Emmanuel and Anne-Valérie, for your presence. We're now moving on to Latin America. Latin America, which has a LinkedIn group, which you can join. There's several chapters that have LinkedIn groups. There's also one for Latin America. And we are gonna move on to Chile. Hi, yes. Yes, hi. Sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to turn on my camera live. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon, good morning, good night. I don't know uh, how it is. So uh, here I'm, I'm representing the HEC chapter where, where we have right now our president, uh, Rodrigo Mendez. Uh, he's right now at south of the country, so probably he, he, he tried to no, it's working. connect. Ah, you're here. Ah, okay. So, working, Felipe. So, I, can ah, you hear me well? Okay. 
Yes, well, as Barry said, she's in the north of the world. I'm almost at the end of the world. I'm okay. like in the south of Chile, and internet connection doesn't work very well all the times. But uh, I'm gonna make the a very quick presentation, and Felipe will end it. So we have currently we have almost 40 members in a WhatsApp group where we our plan is to to do few few. Um, activities, but important ones. Well, here in Chile, the country has a uh, 19 uh, million people, and in Santiago live most of the people. They, there is almost a half of the country in Santiago, there live 8 million people, and most of the people who want to study to HC, their degree are, they are lawyers, civil engineers, or they study administration. Um, what I was telling you that uh, in our in our community, in the HC community, we want to do only a few activities, but important one. Here in Chile, uh, I have replicated the MBAT. So we have a, a soccer tournament that there is 16 university MBAs that play in that tournament. In that tournament, they play uh, Harvard, MBAs, well, all of the most important MBAs. Um, universities. So what we do, we do a barbecue before that tournament, before that soccer tournament, and then we meet for the soccer tournament. And uh, the other activity that we make every year, we try to have a connections with the French embassy. One time we invite the ambassadors to our, to my home. So we, we start building a connection with them. And our idea is to make one uh, activity together with them every year. But due to the coronavirus, we have to cancel this uh, the last year and also we want to join the HEC happy hour there is well most of you know that there is um, an activity around the world that try to gather all the HEC alumni in the same day so we want to join that and uh, we define three objectives for our network the first one is to increase the relation with the French community the second one is to have few but important activities and the third one we wanted to make the HTC brand is stronger in Chile, so more people will know the brand and it will be easier to make business of contact for the HTC community. So now I will give the word to Felipe to end the quick mm -hmm. presentation. Okay, thank you, Rodrigo. Okay, if, if we look at the market landscape, Chile is the fifth economy in Latin America. However, we have one of the highest GDP uh, in the region. Uh, and in fact, Chile today uh, makes part of the OCDE, uh, as an almost developed uh, economy. Uh, today, the, the Chilean market is very open. Uh, probably, I think that we are one of the countries that has the, the highest amount of free trade agreements. So we have lots of uh, businesses uh, all around the world. So, uh, but also we have pros, pros and cons. So uh, today, cons, uh, Mainly, we have uh, other countries like China that their exports are obviously cheaper than us. But however, we have other tough areas like mining. You can see at the uh, lower right corner uh, right there that mining is one of the activities most important here in Chile, followed by uh, manufacturing and also their uh, forestry, uh, forestry too. So uh, today, uh, Chile is a very, quiet country, uh, if we could say so, regarding all the region. Uh, and one of the things that a former presidents used to say uh, is that in Chile, the institution works. That means that we have uh, the government, we have the, the, the lawyers and, and all the legal area that is all separate. We, and that is why also we like to do business uh, almost uh, written every co writing every contract uh, it is very formal in this way and very uh, professional so uh, today we have lots of big companies here in chile uh, from from outside uh, even french ones like a false or one uh, and obviously we have uh, some uh, uh, amazon uh, areas also developed by uh, right now very, very it's probably very few uh, months ago so uh, in Chile we speak Spanish most of the most of the people speak Spanish uh, and uh, after that uh, very few speaks English but uh, unfortunately other languages like French or even German 
uh, it's very it's, it's a very little one uh, piece of our population that speaks uh, these kind of uh, languages. So uh, we like to we have a contact with the Franco Chilean uh, Chamber of Commerce, and we hope to increase our our uh, force here in Chile in order to have even more contacts with you and since. Uh, uh, that uh, we invite you to come to Chile and enjoy a very good wine. First of all, Chile is very good wine. And ah, yeah, there is someone moving the head. Yeah, that's it. So we invite you to, to drink wine, visit uh, the Chilean Patagonia and uh, the driest desert in the world, that is the Atacama Desert. So everybody is very welcome here in Chile. Thank you very hey. much. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you, Rodrigo. We're now going to move on to Mexico. Hi, everybody. Um, well, let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm, I'm Cesar. I'm from uh, the uh, MBA's uh, 2016 um, uh, graduation date. Uh, the, 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 the group here in Mexico, uh, it's uh, uh, it, it hasn't been together for for that uh, for that long, so so far I have uh, around eighty alumni uh, contacts across the country. Uh, most of them are Mexican, but we we have a, a very significant number of uh, French nationals that that live here that uh, immigrated uh, for um, work purposes, mostly for French companies like Vente Paribas, uh, some uh, retail companies. Uh, so we have. Uh, a good um, a good amount of French here. Um, most of the French nationals that are here graduated from Grand Ecole. Most of the Mexicans are MBA. Uh, so there, there, there's a, a, a difference there. Um, we try to do one to two gatherings per year. Of course, that last year was, uh, was uh, different. We couldn't do anything. Uh, but uh, But yeah, I try to organize a couple of meetings per year. To, to strengthen the, the, the network. Last time, uh, fortunately, uh, we had uh, Vincent uh, join us. Uh, that was very good. Um, but I think uh, 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 some of us uh, are still uh, keeping in touch. So I, I think it has worked pretty well. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was doing, uh, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, I was doing a, a newsletter, um, a newsletter to help uh, businesses uh, from uh, from our, our members uh, to to sell uh, their stuff uh, on, on the tough times. Uh, but other than that, there's not much communication among us right now. Uh, we have a, a LinkedIn uh, page where we're constantly posting uh, related things to to the uh, alumni, but that's pretty much it. The market lands, uh, landscape from the alumni, as I said, there's uh, a lot of people working on French companies. Amazon is one of the biggest ones, uh, healthcare, uh, consulting firms. Um, but uh, talking about a little bit about Mexico, as our um, Manchelian friends uh, did, I think uh, Mexico has a, a large opportunity with uh well with, with our uh, neighbors to the north uh, we work a lot with the with the us we don't work that much with with europe uh, as we should uh, so most of the companies and the businesses are related to to the united states um then um also for uh, in industries well i think the automotive uh, industry is uh, very important as well as the manufacturing in the north um and that's one of the difficulties here in Mexico that some of the alumni live in other cities and there are not that many there. So uh, up in the north in Monterrey, there's people there. So when I do the gatherings are mostly in Mexico City, uh, it's really hard to get uh, a hold of them because, well, distance, right? Um, so uh, lo local tips for the network. Uh, so most of them are in LinkedIn. Uh, uh, we, we use LinkedIn uh, uh, a lot to, to communicate among us. Um, and well, I think the, the, the networking work works a lot best in, in person. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me and you can see a picture here of our last uh, gathering where we had a, a beer tasting uh, event. 
Thank you very much, César. We're now going to move on to the U.S., starting with the Midwest region and Chicago. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to start with uh, Chicago for a change, because usually we are in the middle of the country and we are a little unknown or <laughs> Uh, and then um, people think in, in terms of the coast first. So thank you for, uh, for starting with Chicago. Um, the Midwest uh, is actually a very, very huge uh, region in the US. The group, however, for I should say, is really focused and centered around Chicago. We have a couple of alumni in uh, Michigan and Wisconsin that are neighboring states, but it's true that we don't reach out uh, further than, than that. Uh, we are a pretty uh, small uh, chapter compared to others uh, in, in the Americas, uh, around 35, sometimes 40 uh, alumni, with a, a, a pretty stable, actually, group. Uh, very, very few uh, expats in our group, but mostly, so a good mix of uh, French and uh, mostly American alumni. And uh, it's very uh, uh, split among the different programs. So we have about a third of our alumni that come from the Grand Ecole, another third from the MBA, and then the other third is from other programs, such as myself, uh, who I graduated from a master's, master's degree. Um, we, because we're such a small uh, chapter, uh, and we also know each other quite well because it's, again, a fairly stable uh, chapter. We tend to do a lot of events, most of our events, in fact, with other schools, with other groups. So what we've done is a gathering with other French uh, schools, uh, mostly business schools like ESSEC, Sciences Po, uh, because they also are pretty uh, small and so it makes sense to to organize events together we've done some events also with some engineering schools and we've done events with uh, ivy league uh, mba programs american programs who have also their own chapters in chicago so it's been a, a, another successful type of event we've done uh, in terms of the market landscape uh, so as I was saying, very few expats in our region. Um, in fact, uh, we don't have uh, so many very, very large French companies that usually provide, you know, a regular stream of expats. We have a couple of French companies such as Bell, uh, you know, the Vachkiri, the laughing car, the, the cheese company. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest French company we have here. We have a couple of banks, but they have a small presence. So that probably explains why we don't have so many expats. Uh, the alumni journey, we, ha we have work in uh, a variety of industries, which is very uh, representative of what Chicago is. Chicago is not known for one industry in particular. It's a very generalist uh, marketplace, doesn't have like the the vibe uh, of other cities that are tech or other cities that are life sciences. It's really a mix of different industries. Uh, a lot of services, obviously, banking, finance, consulting. Uh, we have alumni who work at Kearney, at uh, EY, at JP Morgan Chase, so big names, obviously, that have a, a strong presence in Chicago. Uh, Chicago is also known for the food industry. Uh, we have, in fact, not among our alumni, but Mondelez and Kraft and McDonald's are uh, all headquartered in, uh, in Chicago, but we don't have alumni there, uh, just alumni working uh, at Bell. Um, in the medical industry also, we have a couple of alumni. Th this is another strong suit of uh, Chicago. And we have a number of uh, entrepreneurs, people who have um, uh, either founded, created their own companies or, or have uh, acquired companies uh, created by others. So it's really a very uh, diverse group, even if it's very small, which is a, a little unique, I think. Um, tips I would share with people to network is obviously to start with alumni, especially people who could be from your own industry. So it's a good way to start. Um, the French American Chamber of Commerce uh, that has a Chicago slash Milwaukee chapter uh, is a, also a very good resource. They even have a job hub for people who are looking for jobs. 
and companies who have needs post their jobs there. So it's it's really a, a good place to start. They organize events, mostly virtual now, but uh, a lot of events. Uh, Business France has, a, has an office uh, with a pretty, pretty significant team. Uh, so young HSA regularly, you find them doing the ER there, which is the equivalent of VEA. And all the professional organizations uh, uh, that you can imagine in your industry. So this is mostly about Chicago. If you need uh, further you know, uh, clarification or question, don't hesitate to reach out to me or Alexandra, whose name is on the, on the chart, um, and I'll be happy to help. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. And a few people asked, yes, we will be sharing the slides, so you will be able to gain, to have the access to the emails and the LinkedIn's as well. We're now moving to Boston. Hi, um, I'm Gina. So I'm the HSA MBA 2004. Uh, so the Boston chapter, uh, it's, it's a New England chapter, so it's very spread out. It's a very large uh, a chapter, but although it mentioned 200 and plus active on the intranet, we are really 80 active in the in the region spread out between all the five or six states. So, um, so ma what activity we do? We do the usual suspects. So we do a lot of um, after works uh, drinks that we extend as well because we are a small group with other um, uh, big schools such as ESSEC, Sciences Po. Uh, EM Lyon, OSCP, Centrale Supélec. We also did a partnership with uh, the French American Chamber of New England and the French Consulate uh, to, um, to also do event with them to extend the network to larger groups. We also had a couple of more thematic events that we did with Ivy League, such as the Har Harvard Business School um, around the team of entrepreneurship, where we um, we had two actually HSA alumni in the Boston area speaking in front of uh, uh, HBS students. Uh, so the market landscape, it's uh, a lot of academia. So Boston is known for being uh, most of the big uh, university in the countries are in, uh, in this area like MIT, Harvard, uh, Boston College. Um, and also uh, the healthcare market. So big pharma, Sanofi, biotech, uh, Genzam, and we have a huge medtech cluster. Also, uh, Boston, so it's known for medtech, for pharma, but also for finance, and uh, it has also a huge uh, startup ecosystem. Um, so the big school like Harvard, MIT, they all have their incubators, and we do have, um, I should say, a student who participate in one of them and with a great success stories. Um, so the local flair. So Boston is, uh, you have the old Bostons and New Cambridge, where Cambridge are more the universities, the students, the startups ecosystem. It is very, very international. And Boston, the area is very dynamic. It's a sports place. So even with the cold weather, you would see people uh, running in shorts, which always surprised me from my Lebanese standpoint. So, and you, it's also home to four major league team, uh, like the Celtics for basket, Bruins for hockey, Patriots for American football, Red Sox for uh, baseball. And I'm a big foodie, so for me, food is important. And even if you can get the international flavor at local restaurant, it has its own specialties, such as clam shoulder, lobster rolls. And, and this area is also, it's less known for that, but it's also uh, known for many firsts, like the open kettle, what the first Dunkin' Donut, it was open uh, in a town very close to, to to Boston, and the first ether anesthesia was actually done as Mass General, and there are much more little fun story that I, I said I will be happy to share if you if you come to to the area, where you can find contact uh, outside the HSC alumni would be I would say the French American Chamber is definitely a stop. The French Tech, and it's actually run by an uh, HSC alumni um, Emmanuel Arnaud uh, right now. Um, if you are in the startup ecosystem, I would definitely reach out to Mass Challenge, to the Cambridge Innovation Center, and to the major incubator associated with the university in the area. 
And you have Gina's contact there on the page. Thank you very much. We're now going to move to the Silicon Valley. Great, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. So I saw a lot of questions around how to network, how to uh, find uh, information. So this is Silicon Valley, and basically the best way to uh, have any contact with an HSC alum, alum is to actually contact them on LinkedIn and ask for a 30 minute uh, coffee or Zoom. Uh, people will always say yes. Uh, and so I think that's the, the best way. If you also want to contact either Sandeep or myself, obviously we kind of uh, branch a lot of uh, requests incoming to different uh, uh, alum uh, alumni from the from Silicon Valley. There's really you know, in Silicon Valley, it's an interesting place because it, it's it's far away from France. So we basically have people who come think they're going to stay for a couple of years and end up staying for 15 years. Um, so we have really it's, you know, Silicon Valley is the tech center. So we have people that are on the entrepreneurship track and usually it's uh, kind of younger entrepreneurs or uh, second time entrepreneurs. And then we have executives in large tech um, companies, uh, obviously the big GAFA. Uh, are here. So uh, overall, it's about eight, uh, 300 alumni. Um, and really, we have a group of, I would say, 80 people that are active. Um, we've developed in the last uh, uh, five, five years, a whole team. So we have Sandeep representing the MBAs, myself representing kind of uh, more of the school. The reason I say that is because in all the chapters, you have kind of this dynamic where you want to make sure that the two communities are represented. And I think that's very important in, in branching out events. So um, we've built a, a team also of Hugo, Blantin and Le who are uh, different profiles, VC profile, marketing profile and um, operations. So uh, that's really exciting. And Vincent is also a key contributor to the chapter's activities. So uh, that's really fun. Key initiatives I want to point out. So one, if we have uh, every year now, uh, we've done a technology forum. What's great about uh, this uh, transformation since last year, it's, in, it's, it's online. And the idea is to uh, basically feature a, a, a certain technology. So we did one on mobility. We're thinking of doing one on AI. And now we're going to do it online. So opening it to the entire Americas and potentially uh, the entire alumni network. So that's exciting. Be on the lookout. It'll be in March. And we'll be promoting that event. The second key initiative is we uh, developed since uh, in the last four years what we call the HSA Innovation Prize. So it's basically alumni from Silicon Valley who give donations. And we select through a process supported by the school, uh, the best startup uh, that has a founder uh, from HSC. And so there's a selection process done by the alumni um, uh, team uh, of Silicon Valley. And the funds are allocated uh, as a donation. And usually we have a grand donateur who matches the gift uh, for the selected startups. And it's a gift of, uh, $50,000 uh, per startup. Um, and there's uh, no basically no ties attached. So if you are an entrepreneur and want to apply for the prize, uh, we definitely welcome some uh, applications. The third initiative I want to point out is the uh, alumni interviews that uh, Blondine has been leading. Leading, And you can see here the links. Uh, they're posted on Medium, LinkedIn, Facebook. I think we just published one in the HSC newsletter. Um, so those are interviews of some of our alumni, what they've done. It's a combination of professional and personal background. It's, um, it's uh, super uh, fun to feature people like that. So be on the lookout for these. Uh, we do them about once a month or once every two months. Uh, also in the past in Silicon Valley, we're very active basically hosting uh, people that come uh, here as classes. So we host, uh, you know, the HSC class of uh, entrepreneur, the MBA class, the executive MBA class, the HSC Berkeley dual degree, and we always organize events, usually with speakers from the HSC community that come and help mentor uh, the young HSC that come in the region. So we're happy to all organize that. And finally, there's a group of about 20 people that have identified mentorship, um, desire to help uh, basically young entrepreneurs uh, through the Station F. And so we have a list of mentors from Silicon Valley uh, that obviously if you're interested, you can ping me on that. 
uh, that are here to support different areas of uh, interest that you might have uh, as an entrepreneur. Market, I won't go into a lot of details. You guys know about Silicon Valley. It's obviously uh, 8 million inhabitants, GDP of 1 trillion. Uh, there's you know, 30 of the Fortune 500. Uh, local tips, I would say, you know, the networks that are very active here in Silicon Valley are uh, French Tech Silicon Valley. So um, there's obviously a website uh, for the French Tech and we have a page for Silicon Valley. Uh, events are organized now online as well through that. Um, and there's a lot of the ambassadors that started the French Tech that were based in Silicon Valley. We have a French alumni like uh, other chapters who we just heard from. We try to organize events like all the casual events with other schools and obviously the French uh, Chamber of Commerce. Um, yeah, and uh, obviously we'd be more than happy, I think, to answer question. Please join also the LinkedIn page is also uh, the good way to connect with the, the broader uh, group. Thank you. Perfect, thanks Aurelia. We're now gonna move to a sunny place in Florida, in Miami. Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay, okay. Wonderful. thank you very much. And in the Sorry, my bad, my mistake, I guess. Um, so I was saying, you know, welcome to the uh, Sunshine State. Uh, this is really what Florida is about, you know, a lot of sunshine here. Uh, I don't know if you see, but I have a little uh, sweater today, which is extremely unusual. We have 16 degrees here in Miami, which never happens, right? You know, so uh, um, I feel sorry for you guys, specifically with the snow that we saw, you know, from, uh, from Canada. This is absolutely not the kind of the weather we have here. But also, also explains why there are so many people that come to Florida uh, for retirement. And actually, uh, I was looking into some of the numbers today and I realized that uh, Florida, uh, even though it's uh, the third biggest uh, state in the United States, you know, there's over 21 million people living here. That's also the fifth uh, oldest state with an average of uh, 42 years old, right? So a lot of people, as I said, you know, uh, coming to Florida to enjoy you know, their past professional life. And, and I have to say that uh, Florida has really a lot to offer, specifically if you like the, the nice weather. Um, my name is Eric Rue. I am from the Executive MBA 2008 um, that I did at the time I was uh, living actually in Europe. Um, and I work for DHL Global Forwarding. Uh, I moved to the US about 11 years ago now. And um, I have to say that uh, it feels difficult to leave the state and to leave the place here. Um, we, have, we, we have a network of about 100 alumni, uh, but I have to say that um, the number of active participants is actually pretty low. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, we haven't really had any event in the last couple of years uh, because first, um, you know, a little participation, but also obviously with the COVID that didn't really help. So, so I'm really, um, you know, and that's really my ask, you know, for the people on the call right now, you know, if you want to participate to any of the activities, you know, please reach out to me. I'd be more than welcome to, uh, to set up something and, and really gather, even if it's only a few of us. Uh, I think that's really what we want to do in 2021 is to try to be a bit more dynamic and having more, uh, if we can, face-to-face, -face, if not, at least having a couple of uh, virtual events uh, throughout the year, right? So. Even if you are not from uh, Florida, even if you are from another country and you want to participate to an event, you know, reach out to me. I'd be more than welcome to, uh, to invite you and organize something with you. Uh, but the majority of the events we have conducted in the past were actually in relation with other um, business schools. Uh, we were uh, we involved with the Golden Alumni, which is, uh, I don't know if you know them, but that's uh, really um, um, an organization, an alumni organization organized by uh, Polytech. So there's a lot of uh, engineer uh, in that, um, in that uh, organization, in that alumni network. And actually, as a matter of fact, they do a lot of um, um, uh, business angel and, uh, and uh, investors. So there's a lot of uh, very good participants and they actually have weekly calls. So uh, we're part of that. And if you want to join any of those, please let me know. We also started a few years ago to create a, a cross business school um, network that we used to call Minba. And, uh, you know, we were, you know, because all the people, all the business schools in Florida had the same issue. 
uh, very little participation. So we're trying to join forces and, and, and organize events across different schools. Um, so schools like, uh, you know, the London Business School or, or Thunderbird in the US. And we've, you know, we, we, we had a few things in the past and I think it's also time to maybe try to, to dynamite that a little bit more. Uh, and obviously we also support uh, interviews for, for, for the uh, Grand Ecole or mainly as far as I'm concerned for the MBA program. Um, now, when we talk about Florida, you know, you pretty think about, uh, you know, uh, Disney and, uh, and um, you know, other places. And, and that's true. You know, one of the main, um, I would say, um, industry um, in Florida is really around tourism. Uh, it really do attract a lot of people. This, you know, uh, there's, uh, I mean, I was reading the other day that Miami is actually Miami and followed the uh, two massive uh, passenger ports, they're actually number one in the world. There's a lot of cruise line departing from Miami. Obviously they were extremely impacted with the COVID recently. Theme park, you know, which are mainly within, you know, the, uh, the central Florida. Um, but obviously the whole area of Miami, uh, it's a very, uh, you know, touristic area, you know, and that's tourism that goes through the entire year. It's not like a seasonal, I mean, of course, there's a seasonality in Miami too, but actually this is the time of the year, January, February, which is the most uh, attractive time of the year because the weather is so nice and you have people flying from all around the world to actually enjoy a little bit of sunshine here. Um, Aviation is also actually quite uh, uh, important here in Florida. Uh, you know, you might, you know, remember that we have Cap Canaveral. So obviously there's a lot of activities around, uh, you know, um, rockets, but also a lot of uh, airline company that have the head office here and, and a lot of uh, uh, supply parts uh, also being handled here in, uh, in Miami. Agriculture is also quite big. Uh, if you live in the US, you probably ate at some point of time a tomato, a strawberry, or an orange coming from Miami. Does not compete with California, but still uh, quite significant here. And sugarcane is also a very uh, important um, uh, agriculture product uh, you know, produced here. But I think the most important part is really uh, Miami, as they call it here, is the, uh, is the capital of Latin America. You know, Miami is the gateway to Latin America. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of logistic activities. You know, the, uh, the port in Miami is very important. The, uh, uh, the airport in Miami is very important. You have a lot of, uh, I work for DGF, I'm a freight forwarder. So there's a lot of freight forwarding company that actually have the head office here in, uh, in the Miami area because there's a lot of goods coming from around the world stopping in Miami and being reshipped to, uh, to Latin America. There's a very strong connection with Latin America here. Actually, you go to Miami and you'll be surprised that if you don't hear people speaking Spanish, because indeed, uh, you know, it's a, we're a little bit of part of the uh, Latin America here. Very, very important uh, um, international community. But I also want to highlight that Miami is not Florida. You know, it's a very different, uh, um, uh, environment, very different context. Miami is dynamic, it's touristic, is uh, uh, there's, there's, there's a network of startup which is, which is growing. Uh, it's extremely international. If you go to what more the north of Florida, you have a totally different experience. And, um, but I think it's important to understand that, right? So if just to conclude, if, you ha if I have one ask to you guys is please reach out to me uh, if, you, if you're from Miami or from the area and you want to meet me or you want to be part of an event, please reach out to me. If you're not, but if you want to have more information around what's happening in Florida, please contact me, call me. You have my phone number, you have my email address. And if you want to be a speaker on one of the virtual events that we want to organize this year, please raise your hand because we need you. We need you to be speaking and we need you to be actually listening too. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. And we're now going to move on to New York City and the metropolitan area. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vincent. I'm Vincent Musel. I'm a graduate from uh, 2008. Um, and I happen to also be the director of the HEC office in the US. So I'm not uh, the chapter president in New York, but I'm filling in for the chapter president who could not do it. Uh, the chapter president is currently Evelyn Este. Um, she could not make it today, so I'm super happy to uh, uh, to step in for her. Uh, 
uh, as I know pretty well, the New York chapter, of course, the HEC office being based in New York and having close tie with the New York chapters and also with the other chapters uh, in North America, obviously. So uh, if we focus on the New York chapter, uh, it's the biggest chapter in North America, if not in all the Americas, I would say. Um, it's approximately 1,000 uh, alumni in the three-state area, probably more, uh, but we don't know all of them. Uh, but unlike the Chicago chapter, for example, it's really not stable. Um, so it's a super fast moving chapter in terms of who's in, who's out. It's a, a real challenge to actually monitor uh, who's arriving and who's leaving. So uh, first, uh, first advice would be if you want to, if you ever want to, you know, get in touch with the New York network of NHSAs, make sure the people you want to talk to are still here. Because, um, uh, you know, many, many people will be here for one year or two years, three years, and then go back to Europe and then come back to the US. Uh, it's really not, you know, it's not far from Europe like, uh, like California is. So you have a lot of go back and forth between Europe and New York. So it's an unstable chapter, but very dynamic. Um, the chapter has been led so by Evelyn over the past uh, three or four years now. And it has been structured a little bit differently from some of those chapters. It's not like an integrated team, but it's little clubs uh, working together with the chapter president. There is a group of entrepreneurs. There is a wine club. There is a finance club. Uh, there is a HEC au féminin delegation. So, you know, we try to uh, duplicate everything that's working in the other chapters around the world here in New York. Uh, New York being obviously one of the biggest chapters, uh, I think, in the world after maybe London or a uh, few other cities in, in Europe. Uh, we, the, the New York chapter is uh, organizing, a, on average, one event per month. Uh, used to be, you know, physical events, but it's obviously now all digital. Uh, it is divided between the social things and the content event. So we sometimes meet for drinks, for fun, for uh, uh, cultural visits, museums, cinemas, and we sometimes meet around a guest speaker who's going to share his experience on uh, a field that would be interesting in private equity, in marketing, in luxury, in finance, whatever. Um, so again, like Eric said, uh, if you're interested, if you're in New York and you want to reach out to the chapter because you have something to share, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'll be super happy to put you in touch with the chapter and work on something. Um, there is a question, how can we become part of the NYC chapter? I think it's pretty easy. You can do it online on the platform, register on the little New York icon and you'll be a member of our chapter. And of course, you can also send me an email for I make sure you're involved in everything the chapter is doing. Um, in terms of market landscape, New York used to be a finance city, but it's not anymore. I mean, it's still a finance city, but not just that. Uh, obviously, if you want to make a career in finance, New York is a great place to come uh, and spend a few years. Um, the big, you know, uh, we have one of the biggest uh, HSA employer here in New York is BNP Paribas North America. So obviously there are some opportunities there, mainly through the uh, internships, VIEs and e-visas uh, possibilities that they offer. The second uh, uh, employer, uh, the most important is L'Oréal North America. So it tells a lot about, you know, the different things you can do here, whether it's in uh, uh, consumer goods, retail. Uh, also, there are a lot of entrepreneurs now. They are not all in the Silicon Valley, even if um, most of them are. But we have a good community of entrepreneurs here in New York. Um, and, um, and the network is, uh, you know, the, the HSA community is a big one here. But we also work very closely with the, um, uh, with the other French-related network that there are in New York, and there are a lot, whether it's the French Founder Network, which we are members of, the French-American Chamber of Commerce, of course, uh, the Association des Grandes Écoles Françaises, the AAGEF, um, which we work also with regularly. Um, and uh, by the way, I wanted to mention, maybe that's what you referred to, Miriam, the French-American Chamber of Connect, of commerce, sorry, they have a platform called uh, Career Connect, I think. Um, it's a great way to, you know, find some French companies related opportunities. And obviously these French companies, they'll know everything about HSA. And it's going to be a little bit easier to get in through those company 
um, uh, if, if you're looking for uh, work opportunities in the US. Um, that's about it for the New York chapter. Um, again, you can send me an email anytime at museel.hec.fr. Uh, I'll be super happy to answer your questions when I can. And if I cannot find the person who will have the, who will have the answers and put you in relations with them. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you to all of our alumni and presenters today and to the HEC teams for their support from restaurants to sectors to uh, sport fans um, and, and local tips to network. I think this was great. So thank you all for giving us overviews and we hope this will give you all the opportunity to strengthen your HEC network in North, Central and Latin America. And here are other contacts in other countries. Um, some of us are here with us tonight. I believe we saw Christophe um, and Michael, so welcome to all. Thanks for joining us. And as Vincent said, we really want you to connect. Obviously, we can't tell you all about North, Central, and Latin America in one hour, but this hopefully will give you an opportunity to connect further after this session. So go on the hcalumni.fr website to update your contact details, to also join a chapter. If you go on the hcalumni.fr website, go into the networks and the international chapters, you will have a list of all the chapters and you can join those groups to make sure that you receive information and that you can connect with the chapters. They also have shared their contacts, LinkedIn, emails, um, so use those. From experience, may I highlight that the network is as valuable as the effort you'll put into nurturing it. And make sure you keep an eye on the events online. Make sure you also, if you're reaching out individually, make sure you use your common sense to contact a busy alumni and respect their time. So now in order to meet your expectations even further on local information, we invite you to fill a quick survey. So we're gonna put the link to a survey in the chat box, and we would like your feedback. You can also always reach out to the HEC alumni team for questions or suggestions. Um, on this note, as we said, we will be sending the contacts, we will be sending the slides. So this brings us to the end of your Booster HEC Network in America's regional webinar series presentation. Many thanks again to all our speakers. And we look forward to the next series. Stay tuned. And thanks again, everyone, for coming. And we hope you have a great day, evening, um, or night. Thank you, everyone. Um, we, we, were, uh, we wanted really to finish right on time. So we have five minutes before time. So if there is some question you want to ask, on the chat uh, box, especially for one chapter, um, it's possible. If not, we are very happy and you will have uh, all what all Alisa said in your mailbox. Perhaps we can remove the sharing I'm the screen. I'm also gonna just put um, Clemence's contact here so you can always contact the team and make sure you fill in the survey. Are there any questions? Feel free to use the chat box if you have general questions or feedback. The Quebec chapters are, are some fun, so we are happy. <laughs> Emmanuel and Anne, uh, for you. <laughs>